The second story of the chapter Lost Spring is titled I Want to Drive a Car which is a dream of a young boy named Mukesh who insists on being his own master. I will become a motor mechanic he announces. When asked by the author whether he knows anything about cars he replies that he wants to learn how to drive a car and this he replies by looking straight into the eyes which make sure about his determination of reaching his goal. but his dream looms like a mirage amidst the dust of streets that fill his town ferozabad famous for its bangles looms hair means looks and his dream of driving a car is like a mirage meaning that his dream is like an illusion given the destitute condition of the town ferozabad he lives in every other family in ferozabad is engaged in the art of making bangles and it is the center of india's glass blowing industries and families here for generations have been engaged with the art of bangle making but mukesh family and all the other family where children are also employed in this art of bangle making are unaware of the fact that it is illegal for such children to work in the glass furnaces because there are many disadvantages they work in high temperatures in dingy cells where there is less amount of air and light and if any law is imposed in such places then it will help to bring out all those 20000 or maybe more children who are employed in these hot furnaces soldering pieces of glasses and making bangles they slog their daylight hours that means they work really hard during the day but this hard work makes them lose the brightness of their eyes and this is one of the saddest thing about the art of bangle making mukesh's eyes beam as he volunteers to take me home which he proudly says is being rebuilt we walk down stinking lanes choked with garbage so this is the description of the town of ferozabad where mukesh live and the streets there they are choking with garbage they are full of garbage the houses are shacks they are broken they have wobbly doors there are no windows and there are crowded families and animals who are coexisting in a primeval state so this is the condition of the town ferozabad where a child like mukesh dreams of driving a car but the grassroots reality is that the condition of the place is very bad so he enters into one such house and it is a half built shack half built shack means it is a broken house it is not a well built house and inside there is a woman a frail young woman who is sitting beside a pot which is full of spinach leaves and she is the wife of mukesh's elder brother is a custom of mukesh's family when the elder people enter the home they have to gently bring down the wheel close to their face so this is the orthodox thinking and the tradition of mukesh's family that the women or the daughter in laws they must wheel their faces before the male elders and talking about the elder people of the family they worked first as a tailor and then they became a bangle maker but he has failed to renovate a house and send his two sons to school all he could manage was to only teach them what he knows that is the art of bangle making and it is very funny when everything goes out of our hands we blame it to our destiny or karma the same thing happened here it is his karma his destiny says mukesh's grandmother who has watched her own husband go blind with the dust from polishing the glass of bangles so the mukesh's grandmothers she blames it on the karma and the destiny that it is because of this that they are engaged in this art of bangle making and my husband too lost his eyesight and it is like a god given lineage which can never be broken so that is what she says in the next line can a god given lineage ever be broken So this is the situation of Mukesh's family. They are born in the caste of bangle makers, and they have seen nothing in their lives rather than bangles in every house, yard, every street in Ferozabad. 
everyone from elders to children they work towards making these bangles of variety of colors of every color which is born out of the seven colored rainbow but they all work in dark hutments they live in a shanty town in a unbuilt not a well built town in dark hutments in very close spaces they work day and night and now since they have been working in such places for a really really long time their eyes are more adjusted to the dark than to the light outside and that is why they often end up losing their eyesight before they become adults so this is one of the greatest disadvantage of all the people who are working in india's largest glass blowing industry that they often end up losing their eyesight because of working in such harsh conditions so in this story a reference of a young girl savita is also given who is also sitting and soldering pieces of glasses so her hands they say that they move mechanically like they are the tongs of the machine a simile the literary device of simile has been used in this line and the author wonders if she knows the sanctity of the bangles she is making and she will know the sanctity of the bangles the day she becomes a bride so the old woman who is sitting beside her she has bangle on her wrist but no light in her eyes because even though she is also working towards making the bangles the bangles have not helped her to develop her own life so this is a statement which she says that she has not even enjoyed a full meal in her entire lifetime so that is what she has gained from this bangle making and her husband too who was an old man with a flowing beard says that i also know nothing apart from making bangles all i can manage is to make a house for the family to live in so this is a common situation of all the different people who are living in the town of ferozabad so hearing him one wonders if he has achieved what many have failed in their lifetime that is he has a roof on his head at least he has a roof on his head so this is the situation of the town ferozabad the cry of not having money to do anything except carry on the business of making bangles not even enough to eat rings in every home so this is a lament which is of every home every other home in ferozabad the young men they are also repeating the same pain of their elders so little has moved with time that means nothing has changed with time in the town of ferozabad it is a it is like a year of mind numbling toil that that means that the mind is unable to think and it is a mind numbling toil toil means hard work so it is like this kind of hard work where the mind is also not able to work and it has killed all the initiative and the ability to dream of every people of every other person living in ferozabad when given a suggestion that why don't you organize yourselves in a cooperative a group of men they reply by saying that they have fallen into the vicious circle of middlemen who have trapped their fathers and forefathers that means that they cannot organize themselves into a cooperative because all the middlemen they have trapped they also and their fathers also and their forefathers also so even though they get organized they will be beaten up by the police they will be dragged into the prison because they will be seen as doing something illegal and their talks they move like a spiral they talk from apathy sorry from poverty to apathy to greed and to injustice so this is the talk of the town they talk from poverty then they move to apathy then to greed and to injustice so this is the common lament of the people of the town of ferozabad and while the author listens to everyone sitting there she realizes that there are two different worlds one world is of the family which is being caught in the web of poverty which is being stuck in the web of poverty and it is burdened by the stigma of caste that is that means that they are born in a caste of making bangles and on the other hand is a vicious circle vicious means a situation without a solution that means a vicious circle of all those sahukars policemen middlemen the keepers of law the bureaucrats the politicians it is like a circle in which all these people are stuck 
and this is the situation which does not have any solution so all these things together they have imposed the baggage upon the child that means the child here is the one who is suffering because of all of this because he has to do labor like the elders but he is not entitled to do so child labor is not something which should be entertained in the society but these two stories give us real life examples where children are employed in such activities where they are not allowed to do so but it is because of these vicious circle the middlemen the sahukars or it is because of the poverty in which they are stuck in that they have to also contribute and they have to work as child laborers and they are in a situation where daring is not a part of their growing up they are also like their elders moving with what comes their way and daring is not a part of their growing up so when the author meets mukesh and she sees that there is a flash of light a flash of dream in mukesh's eyes she becomes cheerful because she has experienced and seen something different so he again repeats that i want to become a motor mechanic and i will go to garage and i will learn but the garage is a long way so he says that i will work don't worry about that then the author asks do you also dream of flying a plane but he says no and he suddenly fell silent because he felt embarrassed because over ferozabad very few airplanes fly and that is the situation of ferozabad few airplanes fly over ferozabad that means the few airplanes fly over ferozabad this lines just not only means that there are few airplanes we see few airplanes flying over ferozabad but it has a deeper connotation to it which means that the street and the place where ferozabad is situated there is less number of opportunity which is available to all the people they can dream of driving a car but driving a aeroplane for the children of ferozabad is a distant dream it is something which is out of their reach so this shows the lack of opportunity of all the people who are living in this town and this chapter as a whole highlights the fact that how child labor is being carried out in the societies even though it is illegal to do so and we have to all together work toward the eradication of child labor so that's it with this chapter i hope you understood and thank you for watching